Hey folks, this is Danny with Stuff I Kinda Care About, and uh, I'm gonna teach you how to build a LARPing shield today. Uh, it's a LARPing shield, it can double as a protest sign if you want it to. And uh, in case you don't understand what I'm saying, I'm saying that we have a problem with how protesters are treated right now just because they're going out to say Black Lives Matter and cops decide to act violently towards them. If you disagree and you don't think that Black Lives Matter, you're welcome to leave. You don't have to engage with me. You can go on your merry way. You can find other YouTube channels to support, unsubscribe, do whatever it takes. That's cool. Um, I'm not making any money off of this channel. I'm doing it because I'm passionate about it. And so I'm gonna continue to be passionate about it and also use the very, very, very small voice that I have to spread love. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to support my black brothers and sisters um, in the best way that I know how. And I'm going to continue creating art and creating weird stuff and just trying to, in general, engage with you, my viewers. And uh, hopefully we can all make it through this and uh, we can build a better world as a result of our actions right now. So, that being said, I thought it would be a really interesting time to address a post that's going around the internet. I don't know if you've seen it lately. This whole thing that's basically like, it would be a shame if somebody told you that you can take inch thick plywood and make a, essentially what amounts to a riot shield out of it to stop rubber bullets and to be able to bash away tear gas canisters and all that stuff. Um, and I am 100% here for people's right to march and to protest and I'm not here to tell people how to do that. I am going to say that you don't need an inch of plywood. Uh, that's egregiously heavy. Um, I, I used to be a LARPer, um, so I'm looking at it from a LARPing perspective. And this is a problem that we can solve. Um, and so I went to the hardware store and I bought myself, um, I don't know how thick this plywood is. Let me check. It should be... Okay, so this is half inch thick ply. You really only need three eighths, but I couldn't find a piece that was already kind of cut down to what I need uh, of three eighth inch. So I bought the half inch. And I ended up buying a two foot by four foot piece of plywood. Um, I have my Lowe's receipt here. It ended up costing me uh, $10.65. Um, I bought a bunch of these washers. Uh, they were $228. This handle was $538. Uh, two sets of quarter 20 screws. Uh, all the screws, eight, sorry, not screws, bolts and nuts included was $2.56. And then I went to Walmart. And I bought a roll of this blue camping foam. If you've ever done any sort of cosplay or LARPing or any of that stuff. You're very familiar with this. I went ahead and did some of the work and I wanted to show you stages of this. So we'll get to those in a minute. I don't need my fabric shears. I shouldn't be drinking Dr. Pepper. I've almost cut soda out of my life. I'm really excited about that, but I get like one a day. So shush. So, I have this piece of half inch plywood. Um, the camping foam that I've got, the blue roll of uh, closed cell foam that I have is 20 inches wide. This came two feet wide. So I went ahead and I cut this down to 36 inches in length instead of four feet. So I took one foot off the, here and then I took uh, about four inch rip down the side of this thing and then I went in and I cut all of these corners off. So what we have to do is we have to figure out how this thing is going to sit on my arm. To do that, we're gonna take a look at this measuring system I have here. And I'm just gonna lay my arm down, okay? So comfortably, three inches in for the handle and then we're probably going to do about 
five and a half or six inches in for the strap. Now, to address the strap, I spent a dollar at a thrift store and I got one of these belts that you can, uh, you can pass through here, you pass it through one of these D-rings and it is very secure. Um, I cut it, since this is cotton, I went ahead and just ran a quick seam on both ends to hold the threads in place. And then I actually, I don't know if you can see that, I sewed a square in there uh, and I punched a hole through there just so that the square will help reinforce the fabric and keep it from just completely fraying to pieces. Um, the other thing I want to look at is where I want this height wise. And I think this is good. So we're just going to do some rough sketching of my arm. Um, oh, and fun fact, uh, shields are far easier to hold like this than like this. So, uh, you'll, you'll actually see a lot of traditionally made shields, uh, cause you get a lot more movement out of them, um, in, in a fighting sense of things when you go into a historical context. Um, and a lot of them were actually done with your hand at this angle, uh, which is an interesting thing. It, it doesn't fatigue your arm as much as holding it like this. Try to hold a 10 pound weight out like this versus trying to hold it like this and you'll easily see what I'm talking about. So, uh, I am gonna have a little bit of an angle to what I'm doing. Ugh, what is wrong with me? All right, so this thing is gonna end up coming in about three inches and uh, I'm actually gonna put it at a slight angle. And then this is gonna be here. And this end is gonna be here. So. We're gonna mark all these holes. We're gonna pre-drill everything. And I need to check on my quarter 20 bolts. Uh, I absolutely love quarter 20. It's kind of a universal threading component. Um, Come on, please. All right, those won't fit through there. I'm probably just gonna ream that out a little bit with a drill. So I'm going to turn this off for a second and go find all the tools that I need because I started this video without tools because I'm an idiot. So let me go find tools and, uh, and we'll figure out where it goes from there. Catch you in a minute. All right, so I have no clue whether or not this is going to be able to make these a little bit bigger, but we're gonna try it. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm digging that. Boom. And for those of you following along at home, yes, tragedy finally struck my wonderful DeWalt drill that has carried me through years of weird home projects, went up and died. Well, the drill didn't die. The batteries did. If you knew anything about drills, Batteries are horrifically expensive. To buy two new batteries for that drill, which is a good drill and I still have it and I'm gonna keep it and eventually probably buy a battery. But to buy two new batteries for that drill would have cost more money than buying this set, which is impact and a normal drill, two battery packs. I've used these Bosch lithium-ion drills for a long time 
and I love them. Uh, I used to do a bunch of apartment remodeling. We had a set of these and they're glorious. So I also wanted something smaller. I don't have a ton of workspace. Sorry about that sibilant S that was very loud. Um, but I wanted something smaller because to be perfectly honest with you, I don't need a giant drill for 90% of my projects. I need a giant drill for maybe, maybe 10%. I would wager that that's even an exaggeration. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drill some holes and we're gonna fit this hardware up and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to the front and edges of this to make it look a little bit cooler and also be a lot safer. We're gonna add uh, some of this uh, pipe insulation all around the edges. We're gonna add the, the foam to the front of it. And then we're probably just gonna cover the whole thing with some fabric. And then you can paint something on the front of it, like a crest or a slogan. And then you just have a conveniently carried banner. I think that's pretty rad. So, let me drill some holes out and uh, you might get a time lapse. I might just edit it out. I still don't know what I'm doing with all that stuff, so. Also, quick note. Nothing I'm doing here is like the law of how this has to be done. You're welcome to make changes. You don't have to make it look the way that I'm making it look. You don't have to use plywood. Um, you could grab something else that's gonna be sturdy that's more readily available for you. I used plywood because I can get it pretty easily. Um, I have the tools to do what I need to with it. And, uh, and I know it, I've, I've used it a good bit, so I know it's actually gonna be durable enough for what I want this to be for. This is kind of important. I'm putting these bolts in from the back, or sorry, from the front towards the back, because I don't want the excess of this bolt sticking out the front. Um, I want this thing to be capable of causing as little damage as possible. The other reason I bought the set of drills, haha, is because I don't have to change bits as regularly. Which is fantastic news. I have one that's set for a quick release so that I can interchange different drivers very quickly. And then this one's set up to actually uh, deal with drill bits. We're basically going to take these channel locks and we're just going to say no you will not move as I cinch this down a little bit. Alright, so that is clearly not going anywhere. But I have a problem. This is really uncomfortable against my hand. So I got to remember later on that I want to glue some foam here so that my knuckles don't just take a beating against this wood while I'm using this thing. All right, the other thing is, is I'm doing this tail on the lower portion of the shield because when you're cinching it up, it's easier to yank down than it is to yank up. So this will be able to be pulled this way towards the ground to make it tighter. And that's another kind of personal preference thing that I wanted to do it that way, so I did it that way. I'm gonna use this washer to distribute the stress on this piece of fabric here so that it isn't as big of a deal. This is super easy to control. Uh, I am gonna want a complete piece of foam along that backside. This is just a little bit too, uh, a little bit too firm against my hand for my liking but super easy to control makes a great sign and if you look at the front of it uh, these aren't standing that proud so uh, we don't really have to worry about them hurting anybody or doing any damage so that's really cool and, uh, and we're done with all of our drilling and screwing and all of that and now we can 
move all that hardware out of the way and use it on another project because I love having spare hardware for projects. This foam doesn't go all the way to the ends, but that's okay. It does cover a little bit too much width wide wise. That's also okay because what I'm about to do is mark all this off and make several cuts. Uh, I'm going to take all this stuff outside. Let me t talk you through Super 77 really quick. Uh, you're going to apply an even coating to both surfaces. So I want to apply an even coating to this and to this. Then what I'm going to do is, with them separate, I'm going to wait about five minutes, uh, anywhere from three to five minutes, until they both are tacky to the touch. So you can touch it, and it wants to pull your finger in. It wants to hold your finger there. Once it's tacky, that's when you go to work. But understand, you got to do this pretty much in one shot. Uh, once you lay this on there, there's no real moving it around. And so you might want to do a test run or two before you get to that point and just say, okay, so I know how I'm going to do this. Uh, if you're paying attention, you see this little lip here. That's okay. Remember, I'm using this stuff. Uh, this stuff already has a seam built into it. You can just run right up the seam. Oh, careful doing that because it does get very warm when you do that. But uh, once this is glued on, you're basically going to run this stuff all around the corners and just make it a little bit safer. So I'm going to cut, I'm going to Super 77 everything together. And uh, we're going to come back when this is attached to this. And I'll talk to you in a minute. So that's that. And, uh, and we're looking pretty good. The shield is coming along. This is great. Uh, it's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and show you what it looks like when it's all pulled together. Uh, so, as you can see... I can grab this, snug it down, and now that's not going anywhere. And we're actually going to go to work on all of these edges, and that's where this stuff comes in. So you can see how easily this stuff goes around the edge. Uh, it's definitely not going to be perfect, but it's absolutely going to be better than not having anything on this at all. I'm going to do that. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to tape all of this a good bit more in a few minutes. Uh, you know, kind of try to pull in some of this stuff, make it a little bit easier to handle. I'm actually going to do that as I go. So we're kind of losing the definition of our edges here, and that's fine. Uh, one thing that we can do to kind of help this is we can come in here and we can just cut out. A little triangle and that helps the whole thing lay flatter so you find your corner you pop that little thing out of there and the whole thing gets a little bit more definition and that is fantastic now before I do the second piece I'm actually gonna flip this over and I'm going to do the same thing to every corner on the back side. And when we put the fabric on here, that's when everything's really going to come together. And it's going to start looking a little bit more professional. Because right now, let's just admit it, this doesn't look great. I'm going to place some tape across the seam between these two pieces of insulation lengthwise to kind of try to hold them together. We're getting closer and closer to this actually looking like something. It's all pretty messy, and it's pretty ridiculous, but we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that with fabric. Ooh, I have this. This is just a canvas tarp. I kind of like it. It's very rough. 
very rough. I know it was only a couple of bucks, so it's really cheap. Um, they're readily available. Yeah, I like this. Ooh, I know what I can do. Didn't even think about that. I'm going to glue this on. That's how easy it was to cover that. Uh, I'm not going to worry about having the uh, glue on the back because I'm going to be stapling everything in place. And that's going to be super fun. So I'm just going to kind of get to it. Try to make this as... Uh, painless as possible. Boom. Oh. So it's not wanting to like perfectly stay in these corners and that's fine. Ah. At this point, you can literally paint anything you want on the front of this. And uh, so take a beating. That was really easy to build. Uh, I can tell you right now, I started this at about 5 30 and it's seven o'clock and that's with cutting the wood and everything so i hope you enjoyed the build i hope you're safe out there uh i would really hate for you know people to continue to get harmed during everything that's going on um so thanks for stopping by i hope you have an amazing weekend love you all dearly and uh remember take time to stop and listen and love the people around you. It's not always about what we have to say. Sometimes it's about what somebody else has to say. So, thanks for stopping by. Later.